Well, good morning. My name is Angela Bradley. I am one of the pastors on staff here at Stone Creek Church, and it is one of my greatest privileges and pleasures to be with you this morning. Uh, last time I was with you, we were talking about how great God was, and we were talk I was doing a little bit of my own little sermon series talking about the names of God. The names of God are things that have developed uh, over time. So as over the millennia, as man has had interaction with God and they began to see how his goodness in their lives, they begin to put a name on that. Oh, you're so good, God. You, you, you are Jehovah Sabaoth. That's what we talked about last time. You are the God of angel armies. You are a power and a might big enough to get me out of my situation. And so this week, we get a chance to look at a name that is familiar to probably most of us in this room, and that is Jehovah Rohi. You might know that name as the Lord, my shepherd. Amen. You know, one of the things that we need to know is who and what do you think about when you think about God? What is he in our lives? Theologian A.W. Tozer said, that how we answer that question is the most important thing about us. And so we need to take time every now and again to just look at God's greatness and look at his glory. So today we'll look at the Lord our shepherd, and we'll start off by looking at Psalms 23. Would you read it with me? It's on the screen, coming up pretty soon. Psalms 23, it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, and your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Didn't that just take your stress level down? Just, just a couple of notches. It's so good to think about him. You know, throughout the Bible, we see God referenced as being a shepherd and his people being sheep. David in Psalms 23 was absolutely not the first person to call him his shepherd. We find it even in Genesis chapter 48 when Abraham references God as his shepherd and how he had led him. We see in Ezekiel 34 where God is referencing himself. He's saying that he is a shepherd and, you know, leaders, especially spiritual leaders, are also referenced in, in Scripture as shepherds or under-shepherds. And I began to think, you know, God, why shepherds and sheep? You know, why are we considered sheep? You know, God has options, right? He's created every animal out there, anything, th even things that we haven't seen, things that have been extinct. Why sheep? You know? There's, there's all of these other animals. And I, I'm thinking to myself, you know, God, you, you, you could have named us out of all of these animals, you could have named us the honey badgers, right? The honey badgers don't care, right? Y'all seen that, that video? Okay. <laughs> I seen that video, Brother Dave. Honey badgers don't care. They're going to fight anything. And I'm thinking, yeah, Lord, honey badgers, right? They attack snakes. They don't care. Black mamas, they don't care. And I'm thinking, you know, Adam and Eve, garden, snake, you know, let us all your people be the snakes, the, the, the honey badgers, right? Let's take them down, right? Team honey badger, right? I like that, right? But no. You know, and, and, and you know, God, all these options, sheep, and he, he could have called us lions. Imagine us, team lions, right? We all going out on the prowl, all of us Christians together, going and taking territory for the kingdom. Doesn't that sound good? That's, it's all powerful, right? Team lion, go team go. I like that, right? We're very powerful. But sheep, God called us <laughs> sheep. <laughs> Sheep have no claws. Sheep have no teeth. 
You know, I mean, God, you know, look, you, you think about the Komodo dragon, right? They ain't necessarily got to fight. All they got to do is spit at you and you taken down, right? And I'm like, well, maybe you could have gave sheep some spit or something. We got nothing. We have no way to protect ourselves. Sheep are not scary animals. That's what you count when you want to go to sleep. And so three, throughout Scripture, that's what God's people are called. And so we have to kind of look at what is the nature of sheep. There must be a reason, right? God is sovereign. He knows everything. He knows his creation. Why would he look at us and call us sheep? He probably does that because that's how we act. And so let's look at a little bit in, uh, into the nature of the sheep and their shepherd. Verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You know, you, you might hear about wild horses and wild dogs, but you never hear about a wild sheep. That's because if a sheep is caught running on its own, it's not wild, it's prey. It's a killed sheep, right? They can't protect themselves. So this type of animal needs a higher, more intelligent being interested in it to take care of it. Not only do they need someone to watch over them, it's not a nine to five job. It's like, okay, I'm gonna take care of you for this portion of the day. You go over there and you go to sleep. I'm gonna go over here and I see you in the morning. That's not how it goes. A shepherd constantly is caring for his sheep. He's constantly looking over them and watching over them to take care of them. He must be ever vigilant. So, you know, actually being on team sheep is not so bad when you got a good shepherd, right? Who's at the helm. Jesus himself said he'll never leave us, nor will he forsake us. That's our God. That's our shepherd. Verse 2, it says, He makes me lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside the still waters. One thing I learned about sheep in my research is that sheep cannot find their own peace. They can't just lie down in peace by themselves. You know, it's important for them to have a shepherd to help them rest because if they are agitated or hungry in any kind of a way, they cannot rest. Verse 2 here sounds really beautiful and picturesque, right? But the shepherd doesn't just take the sheep to a patch of green and then they lie down and rest. That's not how it goes. The shepherd has to get up and close and personal with the sheep. He has to find out who has something bugging them. What's going on with each and every one of them? Are they hungry? Do they, do they have bugs going up? Because see, when, when sheep have bugs bugging them, it's real. So the bugs are going all up in their nostrils. They're going in their ears. They're going in their mouth. They're all in their undercarriage, right? They cannot rest like that. And so sheep may try to, to, to solve that itch by themselves. And what they do is, you know, you need them skinny little legs and all that body. You know, they, they can't like reach up a hoof and scratch themselves, right? It doesn't work like that. So what they do is they, they'll, they'll try to go up to a tree or a bush and then they'll just scratch, 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 scratch. Until some sheep have been known to try to scratch their itch so hard that they actually kill themselves. Trying to solve their own problems. And isn't that like us? We all have things that bug us. We all have itches that we, have to, we try to scratch and try to deal with and try to get rid of on our own. We try to figure out how to cope. And sometimes our coping mechanisms to deal with the pain and the aggravations of life get us in trouble. <clears throat> and if you're like me, some of the coping mechanisms that you might have in your life might get you into a near addiction or a full-blown addiction. Going to any other means of relief from our issues instead of going to our shepherd is wrong because it can become an idol. It takes God's place in our lives. So instead of going to him, we're going to go to it. When we're dealing with this thing, we're going to go find this it or this who, and we're going to go to that to try to solve those problems and scratch 
our own itches. But what shepherds do for those sheep that have the bugs bugging them, they might cover them in oil so that those bugs can't land on them and they are repelled from them. And I want to tell you this morning that your shepherd wants to cover you in his own substance, his own blood to protect you and keep you from the enemy. The weapons may form, but they cannot prosper. He's a good shepherd. Amen. And another thing, another place that sheep cannot find their own peace is that sometimes there's bickering amongst the sheep. Sometimes some of them are jockeying for position and they want to be the head sheep and, you know, when somebody else comes around, they kick them, (laughs) right? And so when there's bickering and there's problems between the sheep, nobody can rest. And so as I was reading and researching, I found this account of this one shepherd who said that if in the middle of that bickering, if I just go in there and walk in the middle of them, it'll stop it. Just his presence. You know, it made me think about this song this morning. Your power, your presence breaks strongholds, king of heaven. Just his presence can stop that mess, that conflict and that bickering and those issues in whatever situation you are in. And I hope that my family is not watching this. (laughs) Because I'm about to tell our business. But it's just between you and me, right? So recently, I was at a family gathering, and uh, this, this uh, mess began to, to bubble up, right? This, this issue began to bubble up. And when it began to bubble up, the crazy began to bubble up in me. <laughs> and I'm from what used to be as I was growing up was the murder capital of the United States. And so I need Jesus. You know, you can take the girl out of Gary, but you can't take the Gary out of the girl. And so I was about to show out, right? (laughs) Until I began to pray in tongues under my breath where only my husband could hear me. I mean, the situation was so dire, so ugly, that if I got in that situation and started to act ugly in turn, then it would have caused way more problems and it might have killed something in my family, caused an infection in my family. And so what I did, instead of me trying to solve it, I just went straight to Jesus. I I couldn't even pray in in, in English and with my own thoughts, I just began to pray in, in the spirit under my breath. I was praying and do you know, over time that thing, that crazy that was bubbling up began to simmer down until it stopped altogether. We need the presence of, amen. (laughs) We desperately need the presence of the Almighty, the presence of the shepherd to come in the middle of our stuff and to stop all of that bickering and all of that crazy that may bubble up. You know, uh, Isaiah 26 verse three says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Verse 3 says, he restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And, you know, there are times when sheep follow their own ideas, even when they're wrong. Don't you point at me. I'm looking at you. One story that I read about sheep getting really, really scared easily was this uh, man, this shepherd, was in, his, uh, in the country, and he had 200 sheep, and he had a friend from the city to drive up and come and visit him. And that friend had a little bitty dog, and that little bitty dog jumped out of the car, you know, and he started running, and you know, like all this space, and he's just running around. And this little bitty thing caused 200 sheep to just run and scatter in the opposite direction. And you know, the ones in the back didn't even know what was going on. They were just like running. They were just, 
It was just mass fear. They didn't know what was going on. It was just like, I guess we just need to run. That's what we're doing, okay. And you know, there are issues in our world that cause mass fear and cause us to react in ways that get us to go in the opposite direction of our Savior and our shepherd. And God wants to bring us back in. Sheep tend to also get pretty distracted and they tend to wander off. You know, sometimes when the sheep wander off and the shepherd realizes that one is missing, that shepherd goes off to find the sheep. You might have heard that about Jesus telling of the shepherd who leaves the 99 and goes for the one. We also sing songs about that. And so the sheep may not have come back to the shepherd because that sheep is what they call cast down. And if you can imagine, cast down is a sheep with that big old body where they have fallen down and they are on their backs and them little stick legs are just <laughs> flailing in the air trying to help all that big body get up and you know it's not gonna work. And as they try to fix their own situation and get out of that situation themselves, they cannot. And they are actually not built to be on their back like that. So what happens is that gases begin to build up in their body unnaturally. And being on their back like that can kill them. So a shepherd, once he realizes and recognizes that one is missing, he goes off and he's searching and searching for hours and days trying to get to that sheep before it's too late. And then he tends to that sheep and nurtures that sheep and rubs that sheep's legs to get the circulation going back into it. Because that shepherd... He keeps a close eye on them so that he can care for them. That's our shepherd. We get in situations that we cannot get ourselves out of sometimes. We don't have the strength. We're not built for it. And we need our shepherd to come and get us. Amen. The Bible speaks of this phenomenon in Isaiah 53. It says, Isaiah 53 verse 6, it says, we all... Not, not uh, excluding the super Christians up in here. We all, every last one of us, every last one of us, I don't care who you are, like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. You know, your life in my life is not a surprise to God. Our tendency to forget that we have a God and forge our own path and do what we think is best is in our nature and who we are. It's in our flesh. And God knows this about us. And do you know he's not mad at us for that? That's why he wants to be our shepherd. That's why he wants to be in a position in our lives where he can go and rescue us and bring us back. And so the answer to the sheep turning to their own way is that he has laid on him our sins. So he takes on our sins, the punishment for our sins on himself so that we can find a way back to him. Matthew chapter 9, verse 36 says, and this is speaking of Jesus. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Compassion, that was Jesus' reaction to somebody who was lost. Not anger, not disdain, not I don't want to have anything else to do with you. Compassion. And he has that for you this morning. I had to look up those words, harassed and helpless. <clears throat> and that word harassed is this word called skulo. It sounds like a rap, but anyway, I'll just leave that there. <laughs> It says to give oneself trouble. A lot of times we want to blame trouble on somebody else, but we have a measure of control on how we respond and how we react. But harassed is to give oneself trouble. And that word helpless is ripto, and it means to quickly scatter or to toss away. So the people that Jesus was looking at at that time were people who were getting themselves into trouble really quickly. They were getting far from God really quickly. 
And oftentimes when there is this distance between us and God, it's our own doing and our own wandering. We done troubled ourselves. But the good news is that he is compassionate and patient towards us and only wants to bring us back to himself. You know, what moves me about Psalm 23 is that I'm not in it anywhere. I'm not the one in control. On all of the verses, you see he. It's this portrait of who God is as this take charge, take responsibility leader who invites us to follow. And he doesn't drive us but from behind with whips and screaming. That's not what a shepherd does. A shepherd goes before the sheep in their path. So wherever you are today, if the Lord is your shepherd, he has already been in that place. If the Lord is your shepherd today, where you're going, the Lord has already been in that place. That's why you want to make the Lord your shepherd. And so, you know, God deeply and desperately wants to lead in our lives, not just so he can be the one in charge, but so that he can take care of us properly because we can't do it for ourselves. Psalms 23 is all about God taking care of everything for us and us really having no responsibility. It's like we are long for the ride as long as we follow him. Good happens, goodness and mercy follows us as long as we're following him, right? And so I wondered, what does that look like when we are leading ourselves? I know we've all been there, but I rewrote Psalms 23 without the shepherd. You ready for the horror show? I'm ready. <laughs> so let's take a look at that. Verse 1 says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I wrote, I am my own guide for this life. I want for all kind of things. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. I have to find my own ways of rest and refreshment. And some become addictions because they really don't satisfy. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. My soul is restless. I don't know the best path for my life. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I walk through the valley of, of the shadow of death, and I fear everything because I don't know what's coming next, and I am discomforted. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. I am alone in the presence of my enemies. Things bug me, and I have to solve them by myself. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Uncertainty will follow me all the days of my life, and I will always search for peace, safety, and contentment. Some of that sounds a little bit too familiar to us, doesn't it? It sounds familiar to me. I've been in some of those places before. And honestly, I really feel like this generation has been in it, and they're complaining about it. You might have heard it when people complain about adulting, <laughs> right? Adulting, when they are having and in this place where they are trying to lead their own lives. I found this one meme, maybe you might have seen it, is that horrifying moment when you're looking for an adult and you realize you are the adult. <laughs> so you start looking for an older adult, someone successfully adulting, an adultier adult. <laughs> I've been there too. You look for somebody to lead because you're like, I got to lead this, and you're scared and you don't know what to do, right? Or you're overwhelmed or you're worried. I found this other meme what being an adult feels like. <laughs> Trying to forge your own path. Something's missing. But that's not what God called us to be. 
Brothers and sisters, this morning we are sheep if the Lord is your shepherd. And when he is our shepherd, he will lead us and he will guide us. Can we show that last picture? I found this on Amazon. I want us all to get this shirt. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> because adulting is hard. Amen. Let's let somebody else lead for a chance. Let's let him be the God over our situations and help us figure out what we're going to do in our situations instead of that pressure being on us. Something I love about our shepherd is his nature. And we find it in Ezekiel chapter 34. And Jesus is really complaining about some of the under shepherds, some of the Pharisees that have been in place. And he's complaining against them. And he says, you don't strengthen the weak. Heal the sick, bind up the injured, bring back the strays, or seek out the lost. And I thought about this, and you know, if you've ever been a parent or you ever took care of a, of a baby, and you know that they can't take care of themselves, and you know how hard it is, you gotta clean the poop, and you gotta feed them, and then they're gonna poop again, you gotta clean that up, and then you gotta feed them, and then you gotta close, all of these things, and you know that it's hard, but you know that it needs to be done. And you get mad when you see in the newspaper people who are not doing that well. People who leave the babies to sit in, in the poop all day or, or they're not feeding them and, and a baby dies or, or, or sitting in a hot car, right? We get upset at that. It's because they need to be cared for because they, they can't take care of themselves. Well, God has set himself up to strengthen our weaknesses heal our sicknesses, bind up our injuries, and bring us back when we have strayed. And he seeks us out when we are lost. Verse 4 says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. On June 28th, my dear father, some of you guys have heard me speak of my sweet father, he uh, went into the ER because he had this pain in his groin and, you know, he had lifted something heavy. And, uh, you know, he's like, okay, this thing has been hurting me for a while and let me go see what's going on. I can barely walk. He's yet fallen. And so my nephew took him to the ER and one hour turned into to six. Six hours turned into an overnight stay and an overnight stay turned into seven days in the hospital. And we were thinking to ourselves, like, what is going on? It's just a hernia. Until they began to tell us that he's doing all these CT scans. And we found out, and they gave us the news that my father has stage four lung cancer. And it had spread from his lungs to his liver. And it spread to his bones. And that's where the pain was coming from in his leg. And if you know anything about me, I'm a researcher. Like, I don't do anything. I don't buy a watch or, or water without researching it. I just got to know everything about everything before I take a leap and join anything. And so, you know, I'm on the phone each and every day with these oncologists and radiologists, and I'd never done that before. And some of you guys have experienced that as well. And so uh, it was very stressful, as you can imagine, thinking about my father. This is my first love. You know, other than my husband, the man I trust most in this world. The man who's been so good to me. And I'm trying to figure out how to help him before they give him all this stuff. And what are you doing to my father? And I'm talking to every nurse on every shift like, don't you mess this man up. Don't you give him the wrong stuff. I love him. You better make sure you know what you are doing. So all of them were calling me, uh, Miss Bradley, um, we, we, we gave him the right medicine. They were calling me because I was on them, Right? And it stressed me out until by the end of that week, I found myself in the ER because my chest was hurting and my heart was hurting and beating erratically. And I, I, I would have just let it go, but it was hurting all down my arm. It was hurting all in my jaw. And it hurt like that for 24 hours until I said, I'm going to the ER. So I'm sitting up in the ER. That was on a Friday. I was actually supposed to preach this message that Sunday. That was July 7th I was supposed to preach, the Lord is my shepherd. And I'm sitting up there in this hospital gown. Now, Lord, how are you my shepherd in this situation? 
it's cute on Sunday. We all dressed up on Sunday. I can hallelujah ha, ha, on Sunday, but how are you my shepherd? And I'm in this hospital bed. My best friend was in a hospital bed. She had been there for four weeks in Atlanta. My daddy was in a hospital bed. I'm like, Lord, what is going on? And in my mind and in my heart, every single morning I had been waking up, there was this song. Sometimes God speaks to me through songs. I love music. And so in my head was this song. Every single morning, first thing I woke up, God Almighty, Lord of glory, Lord, we give you praise. And it being in the back of my mind, yes, it would give me some peace. And it wasn't until nine days later that I got my answer from God. Where are you and how are you, the Lord my God, my shepherd in this situation? When I turned that song from the back of my mind and began to put it in the front of my mind, and I turned it up and I turned it on the radio and I started to listen to it and I listened to the words and then I began to worship God. And then for the first time, I took my eyes off of that situation that I had been engrossed in and that had led me away from my shepherd. And I had put my eyes on his majesty and his strength and his power again. And it wasn't that that revelation uh, reversed the diagnosis. It's that I took the crazy control that I was trying to hold on to the situation with and released it and gave it to him. And I made the Lord my God, my shepherd. I made him my shepherd. And that's who God wants to be with all of us this morning. And so before Pastor Ryan comes up, I'd love to pray with you because this message has been on my heart for two months. And he had me bring it today for a reason. I don't know what you're going through. Your shepherd does. He's close to you. He's not a far off shepherd. For him to be your shepherd, if he is your shepherd, he has intimate knowledge of you. He knows you're down sitting and you're uprising. He knows the thoughts of your heart. He knows the crazy that might be bubbling up around you. He knows you. And so, let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that we are not alone. That's the one thing that we can get out of Psalm 23, that we are never alone, that you are with us if we follow your voice, if we make you our shepherd. And so right now, God, we just, all of us this morning, we just pray and we make you our shepherd. And God, Lord, there are things that are bugging us. We ask for you to cover us and protect us from those things that are bugging us. We ask you to gently link, get your, your rod and your staff and get us back into the fold where we have gone off in our own mind and in our own wanderings, Lord. We give our lives to you. We ask you to lead it. We thank you for your grace and your power and your majesty. In the name of Jesus, amen.